Hello everyone, this is John Gillen here again with the great Gruesome Herzog as my co-host and tonight's great guest is Colin Fays. Colin, how are you doing? I'm good, how are you guys? Thank you for having I'm, me. I'm fine, thanks. Thanks for coming on. How are you, Gruesome? Fantastico. As usual. Right, uh, Colin, um, my opening question is always, how did you get into films? So would you like to give us a little introduction as to how you got into films in the first place? Sure would. Uh, so I've, I've kind of always been a, a movie nerd, I guess. I, I was into watching movies long before it ever occurred to me that I could actually be into making them. It was kind of a, a realization after the fact that I was already writing movies with my friends and doing stuff on the side, and I was doing animation and one day I was like, hey, wait a minute, I could actually do this, like, for a living. And uh, since then I have pursued it very, <laughs> all it's like, pretty much nonstop. So I, yeah. I watched hundreds of movies a year um, when I was in high school and junior high. My parents were movie fans, and it goes way back. And I believe you like a lot of the, qu the classics. Can you name some favorites? Oh, yeah, I mean, well... Let me see. I, in, in in the genre and out, I've I've my my favorite horror films really are kind of the obvious classic ones. I love The Shining. So so would you say The Shining? If you had to name your number one favorite, we've all watched a lot of uh, favorite horrors. It's up there in my top ten. But would you name that as your favorite? No, I don't think so. It's it's no. a very good movie and it's it's one of the best ones. But I save it for last. The, save the your main... favorite to last. Yeah, I'll okay. save it for the for the last. So bad at favorites. It's like it depends on what day you ask me. Uh, uh, yeah, before <laughs> before we go on, gruesome. Can I just say to Colin, um, have you seen Room Two Three Seven? I have actually. That's the one that's the. That, uh, yeah. John what did you What did you think? Because I've been trying to get everyone else uh, to watch it. Whether you believe any of it or not, the way that I look at it is that there must be a degree of truth in some of it. Wait, no. Am I thinking of the same movie? What, what is Room it's, it's 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 the documentary on the making of The Shining. Oh no, then I haven't seen that. Uh, oh, that. Well, can I recommend that when you have time, that maybe you know you have a quick look at it and see what you think. It's just different people's theories on the underlying themes behind the movie. I know I'm boring, gruesome because I've said this so many times. <laughs> I'm uh, not bored. It, it, is, it is really is an interesting watch. Oh, I'll definitely check it out. Okay, so, um, yeah, you like a lot of the the old classics. I enjoy a lot of the old classics, a lot of the black and white. If we uh, continue okay. with, um, uh, you did a couple of shorts to start off with, Thog and Held and Burns. Would you like to tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, sure. I, I got started in animation because I, I wanted to do special effects for a movie I wrote with my friends in sixth grade called Moo You, The Adventures of Super Cow which, as you can imagine, was genius. And uh, unfortunately, we didn't have a camera, so we couldn't actually shoot anything. But I did get uh, 3D software and learn to do visual effects because I was um, ahead of myself not having a camera. And uh, I just started doing, like, messing around with it and started doing animations. So the first stuff that I did were these animations for my high school art classes and then just for fun on the side. And the first one was, as you said, uh, Thog, which, I should know, was that the first? That was the first... Yeah one that really anybody knows about um, and it was about a troll in a horror movie who kind of takes over the, the set and goes insane and starts making his own horror movie that uh, was a kind of a dark comedy really but I had no idea what I was doing it's amazing it got finished <laughs> <laughs> that's a good way to start out and Harold and Burns Harold and Burns was my thesis film in college so it was a live action short with a giant animated man eating rabbit in it um, and it was just kind of like a, it actually was based on a kid's book that I had previously done and it was kind of a, a college aged version of it where he, he's supposed to watch this rabbit and it's just weird and his friend shows up and feeds it to like it's huge and then it eats him this revenge <laughs> and are either of those uh, have you put on YouTube for people to view them at all now? Yeah, they're both on YouTube. Um, I don't know that I'd advise watching Dog anymore, but Harold and Burns is fun. Every time I watch it, I'm like, hey, this is better than I remembered it was. Well, maybe fans of your work would go back and like to just check them out anyway. Yep, so. It should all be on my website, including some stuff that's like really old. All right. 
Um, and your first feature that we go into is Banshee. Yes, it is. So I was interning for uh, Andrew Gernhard at Synthetic Cinema when I was a junior in college. We worked. I worked on um, Werewolf: The Devil's Sound, which uh, I don't know what it's called in the UK. It's different, I think. And uh, that was a, a werewolf movie. And I came back the next year. I had been doing visual effects to work on uh, Banshee, which was a script that the same two guys who did Werewolf had written, uh, Greg and Christian. Um, and it was written originally as a comedy. And they had another intern, uh, John Doolin, from our intern, come back to rewrite it as a serious but kind of goofy horror movie. And then I said, hey, as long as I'm doing the visual effects, like if I co-direct it with you, um, probably be a lot cheaper. So it <laughs> started off there and then just kind of stepped in and stepped up and I brought my friend from school into DP it and um, we shot that movie like crazy fast <laughs> that, a couple months after I graduated. And, uh, well, the, the, you can see uh, your talent for special effects because re- I think that they really shine in that film. Um, especially when uh, the guy gets his head blown off. I thought that was brilliant. I did see Banshee, uh, Colin, and what I find, i seen uh, Attack of the Sasquatch first, and then i seen Banshee. And, of course, Kevin Shea I have known from that film. And Banshee, to me, is a very interesting character for a story because when you watch Banshee, like you said, it's a little silly. But what makes this movie so good is because of the uh, uh, some of the comedy that's in it. You know, what I mean, uh, I Greg Nutcher, Officer Young. He's mm-hmm. also he's a real cop for real. Well, at least he was a cop. For, I mean, he might still be a cop yet. He's also an actor too. I, I I like the idea. The reason why I came across Banshee is because of Attack of the Sasquatch, because a lot of the cast is on that and went on the, to Banshee. So that's one of the reasons why. Banshee caught my attention is because of a similar cast, and I did I did quite enjoy Banshee. So yeah, actually, there's a real basically a lot of people don't really work this way because it's not that common anymore. But Synthetic Cinema, which is uh, Andrew's company along with um, Rich and Bonnie Lucas, has kind of a, a little family out here that just makes movies in Connecticut, and I think they've done four, three or four before Banshee. And Banshee was kind of, we were trying to take it to the next level. We got new cameras and um, invested some more money, a little more time in it, and I did digital effects instead of just the um, practical stuff they had done before. But you'll see a lot of the same cast and crew repeat through the synthetic cinema movies. Yeah, and I just want to tell you that I, I quite enjoyed the Banshee, so. Well, thank you. Yep. <laughs> it, was, it had some really fun moments. And the head, the head blowing up scene is definitely my favorite as well. <laughs> <laughs> Next wow. film, I don't know if Gruesome has seen this, and that is uh, Alien Opponent, which is great fun. Oh, yeah. It, depending on, on what my mood is, Alien Opponent is it's, it's possibly the best movie that I've done. And I, I say that because it's the most unique, in the sense that it's, it's really not a good movie by any, <laughs> any measure. But the people who like it really love it. It's just yeah. bizarre. You, you've got some great characters in there. The mum's swinging around the gun and shooting at anyone, and the whole TV bit there, I don't know what you call it in America, but their advert on the telly. Yeah. And, of course, you've got Roddy Piper. How did you get Roddy Piper in there? You know, we, we wanted to kind of step it up again. We, we've been trying to, you know, Synthetic Cinema was really small. We were trying to, to stay in business, basically. And uh, we knew that we needed to start adding some stars into the movies to get anywhere. And it was a combination of calling around and asking who knew who and trying to talk to agents and pick people that we liked. And Roddy Piper turned out to be awesome. He was great to work with and he was really funny. And he's really actually a very talented actor. Yeah, I met him. He's a good guy. He is. Did he... uh, Oh, sorry, carry on. Go ahead. No, did he bring any of his own lines along? Like, I know that he did... Um, in They Live, or was that not part of it? He did improv some stuff. I mean, uh, I, don't, I, can't, I can't remember off the top of my head, but he, right from the beginning, he came in and he was like, I'm going to try this scene three different ways. Tell me which way is your favorite. And that was, the first thing he shot was his speech in the junkyard where, uh, you know, it ends with, let's blow these motherfuckers with the big machine gun. <laughs> and, um, 
It was, it, was, it was so fun, like right when he arrived, it was such a great energy. But that movie came about, like I said, Synthetic Cinema is this kind of repeat movie uh, like community here in a weird sort of way. And we were talking about what to do next, and I was like, you know, we've done, what we do best is this bizarre kind of comic B-movie edge to these things. It's not the dramatic stuff, like there's some dramatic scenes in Sasquatch, and they're, you know, eh. So, <laughs> so I was like, let's make a movie that's just all the crazy parts. And not not do the rest, <laughs> and that's where I came from. Um, and now, can we move on to Remains? Mm-hmm. Another film that you directed. Yep. Um, so, let me to tell you how that came about. Yep. So, Remains was we had been both those first movies, all three of them actually, we sold to the Trailer Channel, which is uh, NBC's horror network here in America, and um, they were looking to get into original movies start making them. And so for a while, like a year and something, we were going in a meeting with them, talking about what they wanted to do and pitching ideas and going back and forth. And eventually we settled on uh, Remains, which was a zombie movie based on a uh, graphic novel by, or a series of five comic books by um, uh, Steve Niles. It was a very ambitious kind of uh, story set in post-apocalyptic Reno which we ended up shooting in Connecticut, which, uh, if you don't know, is on the complete opposite side of the country. (laughs) Um, And uh, it was just about two people who are not really the ones who you would ever think would survive the apocalypse, just very apathetic people who survive and they hate each other. And so they have a whole casino to themselves and they hate each other. Um, But the movie was really a a change for us because it was a much bigger budget than what we'd done before, but with a lot of... um, Kind of, you know, working with the network involved in it that, that changed the process quite a bit. Yeah, I I saw Re- Remains, and ironically, uh, before I seen it, I met uh, Miko Hughes. Yeah. And me and Miko were talking about this film, and he quite enjoyed his part in this film. And this is a different role for Miko. I mean, if people who have seen it know what I'm talking about, which I'm not, I'm not going to bring it up. But I'll let people watch it. But um, Remains is, it, it, uh, like you said. It's a very high, it's a higher budget than normal, but I really enjoyed this because, especially the ending, the, the way it ended was awesome. I mean, there wasn't a conclusion; it was just uh, uh, the car trying to get out of the garage, and, and uh, you know, what I'm talking about it. But I, I really did enjoy this one. John, did did you watch Remains? I have seen Remains it was a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. but I did enjoy it. <laughs> that one seems to be our most kind of um, of the movies I've done. The one that gets the most reach, like most people who contact me are about remains. It seems to be seen a lot. Yeah. Well, you you mentioned why it's because I mean it's more wide widespread. So. Yeah, and it's a zombie movie. Which and uh, am I like, not correct? It's also in Redbox. It was. I, I think it was. Yeah, I'm um, sure it was. Been, I know yeah. it's been in Walmart ever since it came out. Like they keep selling out and ordering more, so people wow. are watching it. Good, somewhere. <laughs> good, good, good. And we shot it on 35, which is madness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you you also have a short film that is that available to watch. The Remains Road to Reno. I would love to see that. Yeah, we did that um, after we shot the movie, but before it was released as a promotional thing for Chiller, and. Um, I think we actually just put it up back online again. It's going to be on the new Synthetic Cinema website, probably, which will be up by the time this podcast is out, <laughs> but it isn't up now. Um, and uh, it's like 10 minutes long, it's three parts, and it's a prequel. And we wanted to do a short about somebody turning into a zombie. So it's uh, kind of a first-person turning into a zombie story. That's uh, cool. Not literal first-person, but like it's yeah. about him. Oh, good. I'll, I'll definitely check that out. Yeah, it's, it'll be up soon. I think it, it's up in some places, but the official version went down, so there's a new one coming up. Okay. Now, you also have a short film called Cold. What is that about? That is a short that uh, Kevin Shea, as you mentioned, uh, wrote and produced, and um, he asked me to come direct that for him. And it's about it's basically Kevin Shea the movie. If you if you like Kevin <laughs> Shea um, and his lines in Sasquatch, which are almost all Kevin. Just like everything he says is Kevin Shea-ism. So it's about like a, a criminal gets out of jail and uh, helps his, it comes and like takes advantage of his nephew and starts getting back into the business and uh, causing all kinds of trouble. It isn't really a horror movie. It's kind of a drama, a crime drama. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's kind of funny too because Kevin just, just 
he just throws one letters around like. <laughs> <laughs> right, the next one we come to is one of those films that I was browsing a store which I won't name, and once again I looked at the cover, I read what it said on the back, took it home, watched it. I thought that it was brilliant. I wrote a review, which I, well, I think that I sent to you, and uh, I just loved it. It was uh, Dead Souls. Yeah, so. so Dead Souls came about. We had done Remains for Chiller. We were going to do another movie, and um, we wanted to do something simpler in the sense that Remains was really extremely ambitious for its budget. So we wanted to go back and do kind of a haunted house movie. So it's based on a novel by Michael Lamo. And the interpretation is is accurate, but focused on the haunted house aspects of the book. And uh, every everything about the way we shot it, um, I, I tried to, to do it really like one of those classic um, haunted house films that I was mentioning, but not by name, earlier. And uh, you know, we even got Matthew Llewellyn, the composer that we've worked with on all of these movies, went and got a full orchestra and did like a big orchestral score and you know the old thriller style. And um, it was it was really fun to work on in that sense. And it's it's a fun contained little movie that I think came out really well. Yeah, it definitely did, definitely did. Very very creepy in parts. And if um, you can imagine it, I drove around with Kevin Shea for the better part of a week and a half looking for a house to shoot that in. <laughs> right. The next one is uh, the thesis woman. Oh yeah, um, I didn't. You guys seen all kinds of stuff I did. That was a um, a short film that um, Brian Trent, who is a friend of mine who is a writer, actually just won the um, Writers of the Future Award, um, L. Ron Hubbard Writers of the Future Award, had written a short story about um, a woman who gets who dies, and is, it's a science fiction story and his, her husband tries to bring her back to life from her memories and is trying to rebuild her out of her memories and his own thoughts and kind of the dangers of doing that um, it's also kind of a serious uh, science fiction story and it stars Adrian LaValle who was in Road to Reno and Alien Opponent right, we've only got uh, one more and this is one for next year so I don't know if you can talk about it it's uh, Deep in the Darkness yeah, um, I can. Actually, when you first contacted me, I was on set shooting that movie. Um, and it's it's almost done now. And it's another another movie from the the novel the novelist Michael Lamo. Um, and it's it's based on the book, so I can talk about what the book's about, certainly. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it's about a town where a doctor and his family move to this uh, New England town, kind of isolated New England town. And they each of them gets kind of separated from one another by this race of creatures that lives in caves near near the houses, and they keep the entire town under watch. Nobody can go in or out, and they can't talk to each other about it, and they can't do anything about it, and they force him to be their doctor. So it's this kind of weird combination of, like, creature movie and, like, family hostage thriller story in the sense that he has to help them, or they'll He's, everyone's being held hostage from everybody else. They're all forced to do the creature's bidding. And it's a real kind of creepy, dark, half like creepy town story, half creature deep. And, and you've got uh, Dean Stockwell on board for this film. Yeah, it stars uh, Dean Stockwell and Sean Patrick Thomas. And uh, they're both great. So I'm, I'm really excited for this one to come out. Wow. You really have really moved a lot farther than you have when you first got started. That's amazing. Yeah, we, we're we're trying to make each one each one better. <laughs> well, that's working. Yeah, this one's coming. Uh, Dead Souls was supposed to, but ended up not because of um, way too boring reasons to go into. Uh, this one is going to be coming to theaters first, and then we'll be coming to television and VOD and disc afterwards. Nice, good job, buddy. Thank you. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be cool to see it on a big screen. We shot it um, 2K and. The last two have both been shot on the Alexa, which is you know gorgeous. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there is a really cool cast. You know, you mentioned Dean Stockwell, Sean Patrick Thomas, Blanche Baker. I yep. mean, Anthony Del Negro. Uh, you know, the list goes on. Stephen A. Miller. I mean, it, it's. Uh, I'm anxious to see this, like like John is. I mean, it, it looks, it sounds very interesting. So. 
it is. The, the biggest challenge of that by far was figuring out how to do the creatures and their environment. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but the, I think one thing I can say that won't give anything away is we built a whole big cave set for it. Uh, ben Chester, who did the creatures and remains an alien opponent, and Sasquatch, um, made these caves out of wood and chicken wire and paint and spray foam, and they look amazing when you're watching the movie. It's like we shot everything in there on Steadicam, and it just it's yeah, crazy. Yeah, it, it is. Wow. Awesome. Now, is there anything else besides, I mean, I know, it's probably not, but is there anything else that you have that's going on that you're allowed to speak about or anything? Yeah, I'm doing a bunch of other stuff. I can't say too much about some of it, but the first thing is we actually just have a movie coming out on DVD um, very soon that was also done for Chiller called the, uh, Chilling Visions, The Five Senses of Fear, mm. which I was a producer on. I didn't, I didn't direct one of the segments, but it's a, an anthology of shorts, and uh, Miko Hughes actually wrote and directed one of them. Mm. And uh, it's that was came out, we shot that in December, and things just coming out on discs now. And uh, we also just finished shooting a movie called Animal that I was also a producer on um, with Flower Films. And uh, that one is kind of, it's, um, I'm trying to think how to describe it without getting anything away. It's a creature feature. And oh, I love it. That's good. Yeah, it's like. actually very much like Banshee. It's like a classic creature, kids in the woods horror movie, but with a really awesome cast. Sweet. <laughs> I say but with a really awesome cast, but I don't mean Banshee doesn't have a really awesome cast. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy Sumter, you're talking about. Yeah, it's got it. Everybody in it is great. I don't want to start this yeah. off because I'll forget somebody. Right, right. No <laughs> kidding. You're right, you're right. Sweet. Hey, Animal looks cool. I'm yeah, so really was, psyched for that one. We just got back from shooting that now, and um, Brett is is taking over the edit now and moving into, into post. And I've seen the cut, and it looks really good, so I'm excited too. Excellent. Now, let me see, what can I talk about next? I'm actually going to soon be shooting a uh, kind of crazy action creature insanity project that I've been working on since December. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. and, uh, it's It's got a lot of fighting, like 40-something people die in it, and um, we're going to flip a tractor-trailer truck. So Ooh. it's going to be it's gonna be madness. That should go a few weeks from now, actually, we're going to start shooting that. <laughs> All right. Excellent. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of great projects coming for you. You're either you're directing or you're producing. I'm just really, really psyched. Um, oh, me too. <laughs> I bet you are. <laughs> but, uh, all right. So that's I mean, about... We also have a bunch of stuff kind of floating around for next year, but we got to see what, which of it actually sticks, including potentially a, a period space movie, which I'm very excited about. Cool. Yeah. If you had to n- name a favorite movie uh, of horror, uh, could you come up with one? Ooh, a favorite, a favorite horror movie. Let me see. You know, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back, and I'm gonna say the original Haunting, because um, that one just creeped the hell out of me when I was little. Um, and uh, I, I once. It's kind of a unique haunted house style in the sense that it's very slow-paced and deliberate and just really creepy and full of great visuals. I love when the door bulges out at them. It's not a good choice, but that's what I'm going to come up with right now. No, it is a good choice. <laughs> that's that's the black and white from, I think, from 1963. Yes. And uh, actually, I saw Wes Craven at a um, film festival with when I had Thog out, and I asked him about that movie. And uh, he was talking about how it was a very different style of horror from from the stuff that that's being done now, and how it's kind of representative of the kind of the other side, the very psychological and um, kind of haste side versus the visual, more visceral side. So it's an interesting dynamic. Nice, good pick. Yeah, definite good pick. Maybe one that one day in the future that you could think about uh, doing your interpretation of it. Oh, I'd love to. Colin, it's great great to have you on here. Oh, thank you. And uh, like like John said earlier, for short notice... uh, That we've done so many movies so quickly that, you know, I used to judge kind of what year it was by what movie I had shot last, um, and I can't really do that anymore because we're doing more than... (laughs) I know. (laughs) Like, uh, this year I will have shot three features, which is, like, just blows my own mind. I don't know when I did it because I feel like I just waste all my time. But um, 
it's you, it's a real easy, much easier to learn from them that way. That you you learn just practical stuff. Like um, one of one of people ask me like, as a director, like what, what one piece of advice is? I say, do your planning in the morning and go to sleep right after you finish shooting. Don't try to plan at night because you'll do a bad job and then you'll pass out. Um, just a lot of practical stuff you learn from that kind of pace. All right. Awesome. It was great having you on here. So, you know. Thank you. Hopefully we'll have you back sometime in the near future after you do like your ten films coming up. Me you know. <laughs> Be my pleasure. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, tell Kevin I said hi. Oh, I will, and then I'll I'll tell him there's a fight brewing. Yeah. Thanks very much for coming on, Colin. Really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. All right. You take care, Colin. Thank you very have much. Good night. Yep. You too. Cheers. Bye. Bye. See ya.